two main aspects. One, what should we be doing now based on things we already know? And for each of the major subjects that I'm going to dance over, uh, where should we be in another 10 years or so, given technology development or new research? So it's all about Qualcomm, because that's the only thing I know anything about. And the subjects deal in uh, how do we define glaucomatous optic neuropathy. In fact, we need a definition. We've never had one. So there's a process ongoing now that I help to kickstart that's going on online. 160 world ophthalmologists are doing a Delphi-like process whereby through various iterations we've gotten down to a potential zone for how to define glaucoma. The second is what's the role of the intraocular pressure in the definition of the clinical behavior that doctors do. So we should know that we establish a baseline pressure, untreated, and from that we set a target range and try to achieve that with the pressure. And that's the short-term goal of glaucoma therapy. The long-term goal is visual field monitoring. And in visual field monitoring, we've actually not been doing very well at it because the standard is to do a field test once a year. And if you do that, you won't detect that most glaucoma patients are worsening for four or five years. And Val Shahan and Anders Hale and others have written about this. So we're trying to convince people that as you initially come upon a glaucoma patient, that five or six field tests in the first 18 months to two years are mandatory so that you can find out, are they one of the many who are going to be stable or one of the few who's going to be getting catastrophically worse and actually needs much more aggressive than usual therapy. There's a zone in the talk about imaging and what we're learning about imaging. Um, the main message there, and in another talk I'll give uh, tomorrow morning in a glaucoma session, is that we've tried to s simply measure statically the size of things. How thick is the nerve fiber layer? What's the area of the disc rim? And what's wrong with that is that people don't have anatomic diseases, they have dynamic physiologic diseases. So we have to begin to think about the diagnosis methodology we're using as a dynamic process. Um, and since my laboratory work works in neuroprotection, we are now in toward the end of our first human clinical trial. We'll see if it's successful for ciliary derived neurotrophic factor. Um, we will have neuroprotective therapy within the next 10 years. So to add to lowering the eye pressure, we'll also protect the eye and or retinal ganglion cells directly. And I'm gonna, uh, for those who are, and this is, this college is a group of mostly clinically behaving ophthalmologists, as I am too, half the week. But for them to hear what's going on in neuroprotection, but I promise it'll only be 10 minutes or less because <laughs> they don't want to see too many pictures of mice. 